Good morning Davao, good morning Mindanao, good morning North, South, East and West. This is Gilbert Lopez Martihe Cazzo. For the headlines, weather forecast, localized thunderstorms affecting Mindanao, local news, don't kill Dubner's hope for adequate electricity, Nordeco explains consumers 1 million pesos electricity bill. Double authorities say Kibuloy tapsters won't receive rewards. Airline firms says Manila Seattle wrote to start October 2. National news Mayor seek, seeks water security plan for Bakulut. Drought destroys over 173 million rice, corn, scraps in Negros Occidental. International news. The West says China makes too much. Its workers disagree. Ukraine warns of World War III ahead of long stalled Congress aid vote. Entertainment news. BTS pop up. Monochrome to run from May to June in Manila. Rihanna, I refuse to buy maternity cloth. For the sports. Formula One. Lewis Hamilton says he plans to raise Will into his 40s. UAAP of the game highlights, Chini Tagaod pours 21 points as FEU keeps win round goings versus UA or UE. For the features, restaurant in California adds Filipino twist to classic American sandwiches. In India's 10,000 Forgotten Mansions, Side Stories, and for the trivia, do you not know that Dabo City boasts a stunning skyline filled with modern skyscrapers? Weather Forecast Mindanao will experience Periodic cloudy weather accompanied by scattered rain, lightning and thunder caused by localized thunderstorms, light to moderate winds from east to northeast direction, and the sea has moderate waves. Local news, a consumer advocacy group has appealed to leaders not to let politics shatter the hopes of the people in Dabo del Norte for adequate and affordable electricity. The consumers movement DCM aired their sentiments amid the controversial suspension of Governor Edwin Hubahib. The 60-day suspension order was handed down to Malacanang on April 11, 2024. While the complaint against Governor Hubahib needs to go through the legal process, we fear and sus the suspension will imperil our united dreams of having our electricity prices slashes by half while getting better service. 
DCM Convener Ryan Ampere said in a statement on April 16, Governor Hubahib has been a tireless advocate for the people of Dabo del Norte, dedicating himself to improving the lives of his constituents in every possible way. The consumer group added, Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin said, Hubahib's suspension was the consequence of a complaint filed at the office of the President by board member Orly Amit for alleged abuse of authority and oppression. Amit claimed Hubahib stepped on the line in taking back one of his service vehicles. The Northern Dabo Electric Cooperative Incorporated, Nordeco, has already apologized to its consumers member whose electric, electric bill reached around 1 million. This following a viral post by Rai Rianes showing a photo of an electric bill of a consumer from the island garden city of Samal, Igakos, amounting to 1,082,417.62 centavos. 1 million ang bill, guba pa jud ang appliances, sigig brown out ang samal, pero ang bill sa isa ka balay ni abot og 1 million. Sakto ka ang inyong ginabuhat nords. The bills of uh, the bill is 1 million. The appliances are damaged. Samal experiences frequent brownouts, yet the bill for a single house reached 1 million. Nords or Nordeco, are you doing this right? Lianes caption. According to Nordeco, they made a mistake in conducting the electric, electric reading before but clarified that the consumer will already give the correct billing, which is reportedly on 1,500, only 1,500. The company is asking for understanding from its consumers and said that the incident is only an isolated case and they had no intention to deceive the consumer. Davao authorities have reiterate or reiterated that there will be no reward for individuals providing information on Kibolo's whereabouts as it could disrupt his apprehension and causes issues among the co-accused. This clarification aims to address questions from citizens and the media regarding potential rewards. Despite the denial by Police Regional Office, PRO Davao, Director Police Brigadier General Alden Delvo, Davao City Police Office DCPO spokesperson Captain Hazel Toazon clarified during an AFP PNP press conference on Wednesday, April 17, 2024. Atong iklaro na walay reward sa individual na makakita kay Pastor Kibuloy. Kung naana, magkatibuag siguro. Mas maayo nga ing ani nga smooth lang ang pagkandak nato sa pagpangita kay Pastor Kibuloy. Let's be clear, there is no reward for everyone who sees Pastor Kibuloy. Offering a reward might lead to chaos. It's better for our search to proceed smoothly. Tuason encouraged citizens to report any information related to Kibuloy to the authorities to assist in the search. She stated, any information that can help find Pastor Kibuloy and the other five needs confirmation before we act. For example, if it's about a school, we don't just rush there. We, valid, we validate the information first before proceeding to the area. The Philippine Airlines, PAL, revealed that the, the non-stop direct flights from Manila to Seattle, USA, 
which will start on October 2, 2024, have already been planned by the major airline company during pre-pandemic days due to the growing number of Filipino communities living in the U.S. Northwest Pacific region. The Seattle flight destination has already been in conception since pre-pandemic because PAL is trying to expand, especially in the U.S. since this is our biggest bread and butter, a bread and butter in our operation. Seattle has the fourth largest number of Filipinos staying in the United States. So that's why, other than that, we also have so many seamen going on and off in Seattle. Riani Romero, PAL, Area Head, Mindanao Sales and Service, said during Wednesday, or Wednesday hobby at Cafe on April 17. Seattle, an advanced business hub and thriving port city, is the gateway to the various major centers in Washington and Oregon, including Portland, Salem, Spokane, Takuma, and Eugene. Trupal Airlines partners passengers will have access to Chicago, Houston, Las Vegas, and Washington, D.C., among others, U.S. mainland destinations. This is the sixth U.S. destination or gateway of PAL following the route to Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Guam, and Honolulu, and eight in North America. National News Mayor Alfredo Albilardo Benitez on Monday asked the Bacolod City Water District, Bakiwa, to submit a water security plan as he noted the failure of Prime Water Infrastructure of Infrastructure Corps. Basi was joint venture agreement partner to improve supply in the past four years. I have communicated the Basiwa. I'm asking for a water security plan. It would not address the water shortage due to El Nino but in overall direction. Planning perspective, where are we when it comes to water supply? Benita said in a press conference. Since last month, water Rationing has been scheduled in various villages, experiencing shortage, including certain areas in Barangay, Mandalagan, Handumanan, Bilyamonte, Mansilingan, Takuling, Estefania, and Singkang Airport. In the city proper, water supply has also been delivered by Barangays 27, 30, and 33. We have existing 70 million liters of water per day, MLD, but because of El Nino, it decreases to 50 MLD. We're short of 20 MLD. To begin with, prime water customers need 90 MLD, so we're really short of 40 MLD, the mayor said. Drought has dried up some 3,241 hectares of rice and cornfields in 24 local government units, LGUs, across Negros Occidental. Latest data from the Office of the Provincial Agriculturist, OPA, showed. As the Wednesday affected are 4,431 farmers in 167 barangays with reported damage to crop totaling 173,576 million based on the period covering number or November 2023 until April 12, 2024. OPA officer in charge Dina Ginsola said 
they have already submitted the adapted damage report to Governor Eugenio or Eugenio Jose Laxon, who earlier said the provincial government would provide cash assistance to the affected farmers. Based on the report, a total of 3,116 hectares of rice fields in 24 LGUs have been damaged, amounting to 168,838 million. Some 4,266 uh, farmers in 148 barangays have been affected. Worst hit a rice farm and or in the south, particularly Kawayan Town and Kabankalan City. In Kawayan alone, rice fields in uh, 20 of its 25 villages planted by 1,128 farmers have been affected with total damage pegs at 67.889 million while in Kabankalan, 13 barangays with 1,214 farmers reported damage worth 41.910 million. International news. Ren Wenbing is reluctant to leave the hallowed act brick, a brick shell which was once a thriving factory in China's manufacturing hub of Dungguan. All the workers felt astonished, says the 54-year-old, as he points out where he once assembled furniture and where everyone would gather to eat lunch. The owner of the company have moved production to Southeast Asia to cut costs. Mr. Ren says he owed more than 80,000 RMB, equivalent of 11,000 euro or thousand dollars and 8,800 euro in redund uh, redundancy pay, which could take him years to earn. We are disappointed and we grave. He had, uh, he adds, as a machine takes a sledgehammer to the windows. Mr. Ren is not just mourning the loss of a furniture firm. He grieves for the passing of China's once unstoppable economy, which is making it harder for millions of workers to find a job. Ukraine's Prime Minister has told the BBC there will be a third world war if Ukraine loses its conflict with Russia as he urged the US Congress to pass a long stalled foreign aid bill. Denis Smyhal expressed careful optimism that US lawmakers would pass the hotly contested measure which has 61 billion earmarked for Kiev or Kiev. The House of Representatives is set to vote on the package this Saturday. The proposal includes funding for Israel as well as the Indo Pacific. Speaking to the BBC in Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, Prime Minister Shmihal said of the U.S. Secretary Assistant. We need this money yesterday, not tomorrow, not today. If we will not protect, Ukraine will fall, he added. So the global, the global system of security will be destroyed and all the world will need to find a new system of security. Entertainment news. K-pop sensation BTS said Wednesday it would bring its new pop-up store to Manila in May. 
on its ex formerly Twitter page the dynamite hit makers announced their latest store called BTS pop-up monochrome which would be launched in Seoul in April 26 and run there until May 12 following this the group will take the store to the other cities including Manila opening at the entertainment mall of the SM mall of Asia from May 24 to June 30 based on the X post apart from Manila the store will also arrive in Tokyo Jakarta Bangkok and Los Angeles this is not the first time that BTS will open a pop-up in the Philippines as the group previously brought the map of the soul and space of BTS stores to the country. Rihanna has told the BBC she has enjoyed rewriting the rules for fashions as a mom, saying she refused to buy maternity clothes. I approach it like everything I do with fashion. She said, I just want to do the things my way or my way and always switch it up and put it my own twist on it. I was like whatever fits in going to work and that made me challenge myself to get clever with style, she added. She was speaking at the lunch party of her latest collaboration with Puma. The multi- Grammy Award winner has two sons with rapper AS or ASAP Rocky Riza, Atelaston Mayers, born in 2022, and Ryut Rose Mayer, born in 2023. Asked about her style in the last couple of years, she said, With the first pregnancy, I was able to wear heels all the way through, but with the second one, I had a toddler, a belly, it was winter, and I had a baby bag, so I was like, heels, maybe not. So that, well, uh, so that's why I get creative with my style. For the sports news, Lewis Hamilton says he will join his old rival Fernando Alonso in racing in Formula One will into my 40s. Alfonso's new Aston Martin's deal will keep him in F1 until the at least 2026 past his 45th birthday. Hamilton will be 40 next year when he start his career with Ferrari in what is at least a two-year commitment. I am not the oldest driver here. I am going to be racing for quite some time still so it is good, Alfonso. It's still around, Hamilton said. Fernando is one of the best driver we've had in the sports. So for him to continue to be here and continue to have the output, his head just shows what is possible and shows the new era of athlete, athlete what the human body can do and continue to do if you nurture it how to follow the chinese grand freaks f1 or q and q and a require a ricardo album albon alfonso and chinese grand freaks speaking before this Weekend Chinese Grand Prix, the seven-time champion, added, I never thought I would be racing into my 40s. I'm pretty sure I said I wouldn't, but life is such a crazy trip. I don't feel 40. I generally feel great. McLaren driver Lando Norris said, Alonso's achievements in competing for so long at the highest level in Formula 1 might never be seen again. Norris said, he is one of the oldest guys competing at the top in any sports. 
and to be able to do that at the level he has done and continues to do. You could uh, potentially never see that again in F1. And if you do, it is going to be extremely rare. The FEU Lady Tamaraos extended their winning streak to four games after their four set win against the UE Lady Warriors in the UAAP Season 86 Women's Volleyball Tournament on Wednesday, April 17. Far Eastern University stumbled in the third but got the job done from there as it downed also run University of the Far East. 25-19, 25-15, 22-25, 25-16. To stay in the hunt for a twice to beat edge in the UAAP Season 86 Women's Volleyball Tournament at the Starts Araneta Coliseum in Cubao on Wednesday, April 17. Fresh of their impressive five-set victory against the University of Santo Tomas last Saturday, April 14, the Lady Tamaraos Handily took the first two sets before being waylaid by the Lady Warriors, who unslashed a strong finish kick in the third. Determined to avoid the same blunder, in the fourth set, the Lady Tamaraos pulled away from a slim 13-11. Lead behind Chini, Tagaod, and uh, Faida Bakanke before 10 Ubaldo. Sealed it on a one on one to play. Featured story from meat patties and the grill to chicken things going in the fryer. It's a basic opening day for San Francisco new restaurant Icy and Wooks. Filipino American couple. Manuel and Cheryl Ramirez said the menu was created to offer a modern take on America's burger and sandwiches with a Filipino twist. We're doing Asian fusion, which is primarily Filipino, Korean, and Japanese influences on classic American sandwiches. So we do a smas burger, a Nashville hot chicken, and Chicago-style Italian beef but with Filipino and Asian flavors, said Manuel. Their IZ Traps Mass Burger features house ground short rib and beef chuck patties smashed on the flat top with grilled banana ketchup onions. Their tamarind hot chicken sandwich, on the other hand, has whole chicken, things brained or brined in soy sauce and calamansi. Then, twice fried in a mochiko butter and dipped in tamarind hot oil, which they said was inspired by Filipino soup sinigang. One symbolic of the power and wealth of the Na, of the Natukutai Chitiar community, thousands of gigantic and glamorous mansion in Tamil Nadu now lies on ruin. Evening had fallen by the time I enlightened from my train in Karaikudi, a town in the Chitina region in the South India state of Tamil Nadu. And there was a light diesel. As my taxi made it way through the damp street into the sleepy surrounding hams hamlets, I noticed hundreds of huge crumbling villas flank uh, flanking the narrow village lane, a uh, village lanes, silhouette against the dark orange sky, and Chitinad Mansion, as they are known. Look exquisitely beautiful, but desolate, empty. More than 10,000 lavish mansions 
that the Chetina region, many of them spanning tens of thousands of square feet. These gigantic, often glamorous houses were built by the rich merchant families of the Natukutai Chitiar community, who amassed great wealth by trading precious stones in Southeast Asia. They rose to speak of their economy or economic power in the late 19th century and early 20th century when most mansions were built. Side story, Arroyo founding anniversary preparation. the trivia. Do you know that Davao City boasts a stunning skyline filled with modern skyscrapers? In recent years, the city has witnessed rapid urban development transforming its skyline into a testament to progress. That's all our news for today. Please like, share, subscribe, and click the bell button for you to be updated of the Pinoy Rob News channel News. This is Gilbert Lopez Martihi Cazzo. Good morning.